Welcome to Lecture Online and in, in this video we're going to study the RCL circuit. We're going to analyze it. We're going to do it again like we did in the LC circuit. We're going to go ahead and come up with an equation that describes the charge as a function of time in a circuit like this. The way we do that we use Kirchhoff's rules by going around the circuit and uh, assuming that we have charge on the capacitor we close the switch at t equals zero and of course then the charge will go uh, through the resistor, through the inductor, to the other side of the capacitor, back and forth, back and forth like that. There will be some oscillatory motion, some going back and forth of the charge. But since we're going through the resistor, energy will be taken out of the system and the oscillations will slow down. So three things we're going to find. We want to find out how fast the oscill oscillations slow down because of the resistor. We want to know what the new frequency will be because there's now a resistor in the circuit instead of just a capacitor and inductor. And we want to find the equation of the charge as a function of time. So using Kirchhoff's rules, we're going to go around the, the, uh, we're going to go around the circuit in a clockwise direction, same direction as the current, so first we will cross the capacitor and the voltage across the capacitor is minus the charge divided by the capacitance, then we come around to the resistor, the voltage drop across the resistor is, is uh, minus IR, minus the current times the resistance, and finally across the inductor, the voltage drop across the inductor is going to be minus the inductance times the change in the current with respect to time, when we add it all up, this should add up to zero. So now we have to solve this equation. Well, before we do, we have to realize that the current I is equal to dQ dt, and therefore di dt should therefore be equal to the second derivative of the charge with respect to time like that. So we can make that substitution. We can also multiply both sides of the equation by negative, uh, negative 1 to get rid of all the negative signs. So this then becomes a positive Q over C, plus, instead of I, we're going to write dQ dt, so dQ dt times R, minus L times, oh, plus, because I multiply everything by negative 1, and plus L times the second derivative of Q with respect to time. So if we let this equal to Q prime, and this equal to Q double prime to make it easier, and then move things around, so this is equal to zero. So write this one first, we get L times Q double prime plus R times Q prime plus Q over C is equal to zero. All right, the next step is we're going to divide both sides of the equation by L. When we do that, we get Q double prime plus R over L times Q prime plus Q over L times C is equal to zero. All right, if we now go ahead and solve that equation, because this is a second order homogeneous equation, second order homogeneous differential equation, the general solution to that is somewhat complicated, and we're not going to show you here exactly how we do that. But in the end, what we are going to get is we're going to get an equation that has Q as a function of time, and there would be time, so we're going to have an oscillating function like this, but because of the resistor, the oscillations are going to diminish like that, and so we're going to have an exponential decay function like that, so we are going to have a minus e to some x function, the sum function in terms of time, and then of course we're going to have an oscillation frequency here. So the solution to this equation is that Q as a function of time is equal to the total charge that we start with, total charge, times E to the minus R over 2L times time times the cosine of omega prime T plus the phase angle. Now the question is, what is omega prime? Well, omega prime is not exactly equal to omega. Omega, without the resistor, would be equal to 1 over the square root of L times C. But omega prime is going to be slightly lower frequency because the resistance will actually re diminish that frequency. And it turns out that this quantity here squared becomes the term that you want to subtract from 1 over the square root of LC. So omega prime is equal to the square root of 1 over LC minus this quantity squared right here, so it would be R divided by 2L quantity squared. And if we then plug that into our equation, we get 
Q as a function of time is equal to the total charge on the capacitor when we start out times e to the minus r over 2L times t times the cosine of the square root of 1 over LC minus r over 2L quantity squared times the time plus the phase angle. Now let's see if I have all the brackets right here. There we go. And then if we put a, a nice box around that, we'll use green to box it all in. There we go. So this then describes the equation that we just graphed. The oscillation frequency is right here. The diminishing magnitude here is defined by e to the minus r over 2L times t. Notice the bigger the resistor, the more it will slow down the frequency. That's why r is in the top. The bigger the inductor, the more it will resist a change in the current, and so the longer it will stretch things out. So a bigger inductor will have a higher frequency, a bigger resistor will have a lower frequency based upon this equation. And that's how we define an RCL circuit in terms of its mathematical equation, defining the amount of charge that will be on the capacitor as a function of time. And all starts when using Kirchhoff's rules, find the voltage drops across each of the three devices, coming up with a second order differential equation, finding the solution of that equation, which is for another video, and then here you get the final equation describing the charge on the capacitor as a function of time, which diminishes over time because of the resistor takes out the energy out of the system. And that's how we do that.